Hi, I'm Courtney, and in this series of clips, I'll be taking you through how to do leak tests on your anesthetic machine and different rebreathing and non rebreathing systems. In this first test, we're going to check the anesthetic machine itself. That includes the vaporizer and all of the piping at the back of the machine. So before any oxygen flow is turned on, for example, I don't even have the uh, cylinder on at this stage, we're just going to make sure that the dial on top of the vaporizer moves freely. We can also take this time to check that the chamber is full of the volatile agent before the day starts. And it's really important that this is done prior to any oxygen flow. So I'm just going to turn on the oxygen cylinder now and we can check all of the piping in the back bar of our anesthetic machine here just to make sure that there's no cracks or any leaks. So what we do here is we turn on our flow meter. It doesn't really matter what you turn it to. For example, I'm going to pop it to 4 litres per minute. And then with the bobbin sitting nice and stable at 4 litres per minute, I'm going to occlude the only exit of that gas flow, which is our common gas outlet. I'm just going to occlude that with my thumb and what we should see is the bobbin drop. And it drops because what's happening is I've occluded the only exit, so as a safety feature, the flow into the back bar is reduced. If there are any cracks or leaks in any of the tubings or piping, that bobbin will stay um, at four liters per minute because it means there's gas escaping elsewhere in the system. So all I'm going to do here is occlude and you'll see the bobbin drop. And you can also hear that pressure release when I take my thumb off the common gas outlet. So that lets us know that there's no cracks or leaks in any of the tubing of the back bar. You can do this regardless if you have um, an oxygen cylinder or an oxygen concentrator, it's the same test. In this test, we'll be leak testing the paediatric TP system. Um, so what we want to do is take the inspiratory limb, plug this into the common gas outlet and introduce oxygen flow. It doesn't matter if you use your flow meter or the oxygen flush, it does just matter if you have a concentrator or a cylinder, because if you have an oxygen concentrator, you won't be able to use the oxygen flush button. Um, what I'm going to do here is just occlude the patient end with my thumb. I have not yet closed the APL valve, but I'll show you what happens if you haven't. So if I introduce flow, the bag just empties, there's no pressure. So what I want to do in this instance is close the APL valve and then reintroduce oxygen flow and fill up that bag. So you can see here it's a nice taunt pressure, that's exactly what we want, that's telling us that there's no leaks in the system. If I press this reservoir bag hard enough, it will actually empty. Some people do mistake this for a leak in the system, but it's actually a safety feature of the APL valve on a T-piece. There, it will open between a pressure of 28 to 35 centimetres of water. So if you are leak testing your T-piece and you fill up the bag and give it a squeeze, it will open, but it is not a leak. So instead, just fill up the bag and make sure it holds pressure like that. What will happen if there is a leak in your TP system is the bag will start to fall down like that and it won't stay nice and taunt. It's really important after you've finished this test that you open that APL valve again so that when you do have your patient anaesthetized and then you connect to this pediatric T piece, the APL valve is not closed. I always like to just push the button one more time just to make sure I've definitely opened it. And now it's ready for use. In this video, I'm going to show you how to leak test a lac breathing system. Now, it doesn't matter if you have the normal adult lac or the mini lac that I have here. It's the same test. So what we want to do is just introduce the lac onto our common gas outlet. We would have our scavenge attached here. Occlude the patient end, introduce oxygen flow, and you'll see the bag inflate. I haven't yet closed the scavenging valve, so it will just empty. But once I close that valve, still with my finger over the patient end and introduce oxygen flow. You'll see that that bag does fill up and it does keep pressure. It's remaining nice and taut and I can give it a bit of a squeeze and it doesn't deflate. Like I said before, it's the exact same test on the mini lac, but what I would like to show you on the mini lac is actually a reservoir bag with a hole in it. So if we just introduce that onto the common gas outlet, close that scavenging valve, occlude the patient end, introduce the oxygen flow, 
you'll see this bag here not hold any pressure and actually I'm standing here and I can feel the airflow come out of it but it just won't hold the pressure so what you need to do in this instance is just replace the bag. In this video I'll be leak testing the McGill breathing system. What you want to do is introduce your inspiratory limb onto the common gas outlet. In this instance, I still have the APL valve open. So if I do occlude the patient end with my thumb or with one of the red attachments that comes with the system, there will be no pressure build up in the system and my bag won't stay full. So it's coming straight out of our APL valve here. So if I want to leak test, I just need to close that valve, introduce gas flow and have my bag fill up. So you can see here it's nice and full, it's staying taunt when I squeeze it, um, and there's no leaks anywhere in the system. If I do continue to fill up this bag, there is actually a pressure release on this system at 60 centimetres of water. It's far too high to be a safety feature for a patient, but it does impact your leak test if you do suddenly hear um, some gas escaping or see a loss of pressure in your bag. So for example, I will just keep inflating the bag. And you can now potentially hear that there is some gas escaping from the APL valve, like that. Still, that bag is staying taunt when I've introduced some pressure onto it. So as long as I open up the APL valve again, the system is now used for our patients. In this video, I'll be showing you how to leak test a Bain breathing system. Now, a Bain breathing system is coaxial, meaning that it is a tube within another tube. So in this particular configuration, we have our inspiratory tube on the inside, which is green, and the expiratory tube go into the scavenge, which is white. So if we just introduce our Bain onto the common gas outlet, the first test I'm going to do is testing the expiratory limb. And by doing that, as long as we occlude the patient end, close that APL valve, and introduce oxygen flow, our bag will fill up and stay nice and taunt if there's no leaks in the system. So you can see it's doing that now. So I can introduce some pressure and nothing releases. I can't hear any gas escaping and the bag is staying nice and full. The same with the LAC breathing system. It also has a safety release at 60 centimeters of water. So if I do continue to fill up this bag, you might start to hear um, the sound of oxygen escaping out the top of the APL valve which you can hear now. So we've just tested the expiratory limb and what we now want to do is test the inspiratory limb. And to test the inspiratory limb, that's in two parts as well. The first test is just visual. You want to make sure that all of the connections are attached and that this green inspiratory tube on the inside is sitting well at the patient end and it hasn't snapped off and moved further up the tube in here. So to test the inspiratory limb, you will need to use this red adapter that does come with the breathing system. If you have misplaced this, you can just use your pinky finger. And what you want to do in this case is you just want to turn on the uh, fresh gas flow. Once again, I'm going to turn it up to about four liters per minute, and I'm going to occlude that inspiratory limb, which is on the inside. And what we should see is that bob and drop because there's nowhere else for the gas to go. It's not going to go into this reservoir bag because it's on the expiratory limb. So I'm just going to turn on the fresh gas flow, which is at four liters per minute. And I'm going to now occlude the inner inspiratory limb. And what you will see is the bobbin drop. And you can hear and see the bobbin move when I release it. Like I said, if you have misplaced this, you can just use your pinky finger or some people do use a pen as well. So you can see it there. And those are the two tests we need to do on the Bane. We do need to test the inspiratory and expiratory limb. In this video, I'm going to show you how to leak test the Burton Cycloflow. What you need to do is just plug in the Cycloflow into the common gas outlet, close the scavenging valve, occlude the patient end and introduce gas flow. And what you can see here is that the reservoir bag is nice and full and it's holding pressure. What you can also see is that the valves are fluttering. 
Once we've finished doing the leak test on a circle system, it's really important that we don't just let our finger go off the patient end because that change in pressure can actually suck some of the CO2 absorber back through the system. So as long as we open up that scavenging valve, then we can take our finger off. In this video, I'm going to show you how to leak test the semi-disposable circle system. So all you need to do is attach your circle system to the common gas outlet, close the scavenging valve, put your thumb over the patient end of the system and inflate the bag. You can see here it is holding pressure and I can see that the valves are fluttering on the inspiratory and expiratory limb. Once again, don't just lift your finger off the patient end of a circle system, open up that scavenging valve and just relieve the pressure before you take your thumb off. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions about the breathing systems that I have just leak tested, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be able to answer them for you. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.